so it's going to have an effect on the the makeup of the brain yeah and in fact the brain is is really affected by alcohol the brain continues to grow even outside of the uterus that's why babies are born with kind of a collapsible skull yes because the brain still needs another full year before it reaches its before it right it, with the soft spot yeah exactly so it's it's really susceptible yes to alcohol now the the first features of course to be formed are the facial features so which is why this is connected which is why you, you know you wonder why would it also why would it if, if it affects the brain why does it affect the way the face looks because these things are growing at the same time right and it, it depends on when the intake of alcohol happens and how much is being ingested binge drinking has been known to be the worst then 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 alcoholism binge drinking is even worse than constant ingestion of alcohol yes do they do we know why that is because of the amount of alcohol that's ingested and how it's metabolized and the blood alcohol level rises so high with the mother and then again with the with the fetus so the cells that we were talking about earlier are being affected I would also think it's the timing of when a woman ingests alcohol as well is it more dangerous during the first trimester to drink then subsequently or is it all equally dangerous I think it's all equally dangerous I I would not say it's more dangerous from you know in one trimester to another it's because probably the, very that brain development all the way through the gestational period yeah it's probably very unsafe to say that because you don't want to tell women oh no first trimester is dangerous but after that you can have some drinks because you're right the one thing that is constantly developing throughout uh, the nine-month gestation period is the brain you can count on that that that's the one thing that is constantly developing absolutely um, facial features though and this is what's interesting those probably develop more during the first trimester am I right about that yes and so that is why some people have said that that's a, that, that this is what's so dangerous about binge drinking at all a lot of women don't realize when they're, they're pregnant, pregnant. Yes. And those first six to eight weeks, many women don't even know that they're pregnant. <clears throat> and so drinking in those first six to eight weeks can be devastating to the fetus, even when you don't, you know, you don't even realize you're pregnant. Absolutely. And, uh, and that's, of course, when you start to see, when the, when the facial features start to develop. And as you say, a lot of women don't know they're pregnant. And they're ingesting large amounts of alcohol, which are, are raising their blood alcohol level and, uh, then of course that's affecting the the fetus and you know then you have the the metabolic byproducts which also can affect the fetus let's talk more about the history of fetal alcohol syndrome because it's fascinating to me I'm a medical historian so I'm always interested in when and why diagnoses are made and the fact that this happened in the 1970s before then it, we've already discussed how that history was kind of lost you know it, it was known way back that alcohol caused problems in infants and children mm -hmm. and beyond um, beyond childhood even and yet somehow by the 20th century we had completely that knowledge was gone so it seemed like there was such a discovery in the 1970s oh my goodness alcohol affects the fetus well in the night early 1900s there was again an interest in this topic and uh, medical researchers were again looking at the effects of alcohol on the uh, the fetus on on children uh, did they connect it directly with alcohol or did they think because the mother was drinking alcohol somehow the the human that human stock wasn't as good quality as other human stock well, we're talking the 19th century well in the early talked. 1900s no actually they were looking directly at at the effects of alcohol they on the were. fetus with the ingestion that now what you're talking about came during the 1940s and uh, actually the American uh, Medical Association published uh, articles maintaining that these children were born because they were coming from poor or weak stock, weak genetic yes, stock. Yes, and we're using, we're putting that in quotes, from, from weak genetic stock. Oh, that yes. Was, that was the theory. Yes. yes. But in the early 1900s, they were looking at the effects of the ingestion of alcohol on the fetus. Now, what ended up happening was, of course, uh, we got into the 1917, 1920 era and prohibition and these issues. And actually the studies pretty much stopped. 
during that time, which and is you know, interesting. You know why else they stopped, too? There was a whole denial in the U.S. that women had drinking problems. Drinking, alcoholism was a male problem. Women didn't drink, and right. they certainly weren't alcoholics. Right. And plus, by the 1950s, social drinking was very well accepted. Anyone, any businessman from that era remembers, you didn't go to lunch unless you had a drink. Everyone, social drinking was very, very much the norm, even in the middle of a work day. Right. Cocktail hour at Exactly. Yes. So, there were, so there were two denials then. There was the denial that alcoholism was a real problem. You know, everyone could handle a social drink. And there was also total denial that women could ever have a drinking problem. Well, I think the movie, The, the Days of Wine and Roses, actually brought that to the fore. In fact, we should, yeah, for, for our younger listeners, we should tell them a little about that. That movie really changed everything because it was a movie about an alcoholic couple. Yes. Who starred in that? Do Jack you Lemmon. Yes. Very uh, famous people. And, uh, oh, I can't remember the, the female It'll star. It'll come to us. Isn't that terrible? Yes. But, very but well yes, known. that movie was a shocker. I mean, p the entire country was talking about the movie Days of Wine and Roses because it, it showed not only that very respectable middle class couple had this terrible drinking problem, but the woman had the drinking problem more seriously than the man did. Yes, and you're right, the stigma attached was just horrendous. Huge, absolutely huge. Um, so by the 1970s, okay, these doctors give it a name, fetal alcohol syndrome. So finally, for the first time, we have a name. Yes. which always makes a difference to the way society reacts to something. Once it's named, it has legitimacy as, a, as something that can be looked at by doctors and discussed as a society, yes. which made a huge difference. Absolutely. But it really wasn't until the 1980s that all the newspaper articles and the magazine articles and that famous book, The Broken Chord, yes. um, written by uh, someone who had a, a man who had adopted a child, uh -huh who was diagnosed with fetal alcohol syndrome, and the broken cord refers to the umbilical cord, and yes. how the, this, the, 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 cord, the broken cord in, in utero that completely basically destroyed his adoptive son. And there was also a movie made about that. That's right. And then there was huge discussion specifically about fetal alcohol syndrome. Yes, and that child happened to be Native American. And, and it's funny, because you, you mentioned, too, in Alaska, some of the original studies were done in the Native American population as well. Yes, Native Alaskans, which include Eskimo tribes and Indian tribes. And mo uh, most of the research uh, between the 1980s and into the 1990s was conducted in Alaska and actually in the nor Northwest and at the University of Washington. Uh, one of our famous researchers is Ann Streisguth, and uh, she does wonderful research on fetal alcohol syndrome, fetal alcohol effects, and fetal alcohol spectrum disorders. Now, let's talk about the, the, the spectrum of disorders. You just mentioned fetal alcohol effects, because even children who don't have fetal alcohol syndrome, if they've been exposed to alcohol in utero, they can still have other effects. Is that right? Yes, and those were called, those effects uh, were called uh, fetal alcohol effects, and, and the reason they were uh, given that name was because often the children don't have the facial features that the fetal alcohol syndrome child experiences. They might not have the entire constellation of issues uh, associated with the central nervous system. They will not experience the uh, mental retardation that many of the fetal alcohol syndrome children experience. In fact, the, the leading cause of, of mental disabilities in this country is fetal alcohol syndrome, isn't that right? Yes. Which and, is it, really and it's totally preventable. 